The opposition leader, Bill Shorten, is campaigning on the central coast of New South Wales today in the marginal seat of DeBell. Mr Shorten is hammering home Labor's key messages on health and education with a focus on prevention. Uh, Adrian, today Bill Shorten's focused on health and specifically on preventative health. This is the, the last piece in the jigsaw puzzle for Labor's health plan. Essentially he's promised about $300 million to go towards measures that stop people getting sick. Uh, in particular, he's talking about a $50 million commitment for more advertising against smoking. He's also looking at a plan which would see 50 so-called healthy communities identified. Uh, these are communities that struggle with chronic disease and they'd be given extra support in order to deal with issues such as nutrition and, and other issues along those lines. Uh, Mr Shorten is really focusing here on Labor's core strengths, health and education, and he's hammering them home in an electorate which is going to be crucial to his fortunes. At the moment, we're in the middle of the central coast in the seat of Dobell. If the Labor Party can't take Dobell, it's very hard to see them crawling over the line when it comes to July the 2nd. Well, Stephen, we're two weeks away from the election. What do the polls say about Labor's chances? Uh, Adrian, it's an interesting story. The, the polls are essentially deadlocked. There was one poll last night that showed that the uh, coalition was ahead, 51 to 49. Uh, there's another poll out this morning uh, in, the, in the newspapers which suggests it's the direct opposite to that. It's 51-49, the way of the Labor Party. But in a sense, these national polls are the two-party prepared only, only to tell half the story. The reality is, is that the polls and what we're hearing anecdotally at the moment show the same thing. That is, that the Labor Party is ahead in some marginals, but not enough, at least at this stage, to take power. About eight marginals that would have to swing to Labor and get over the line are still at this stage staying in the coalition's column, albeit very narrowly. So you'd have to say that if an election was held today instead of in two weeks' time, all likelihood, in all likelihood the coalition would get back into power, albeit with a very much reduced majority. Labor will need to do something, you'd say, in the last two weeks to disrupt that and to try and get itself in a position to take it home. So there is still some ground for Labor to make up. Stephen, Bill Shorten made his announcement today at a Saturday morning netball competition and it seems netball has been a bit of a theme today. It has. We have both the opposition leader and the Prime Minister at netball centres this morning. Now, uh, Bill Shorten's here because he wants to emphasise the importance of health when it comes to uh, sport. Sorry, when it comes to health. He says that by encouraging kids to take part in netball uh, and sports like that, uh, the, the government is in a better position to actually make sure they don't develop any chronic diseases, in particular obesity. So that's the link there. The Prime Minister's approach is a little different. He's promising two $10 million grants to build two separate netball centres, one in Victoria, in Deakin, in a, in a marginal seat uh, down there, and another up in Queensland. Now, Adrian, if you were terribly cynical, you would argue that both this photo opportunity and the Coalition's promises are based on nothing more than a desire to present nice, pretty pictures of kids playing sports two weeks out on a Saturday towards the election. I'm not sure if I'm quite that cynical, but if you think that image has got nothing to do with the announcements today, uh, then you're probably a little bit naive. 